hey guys welcome back i've had a lot of requests for some sculpting videos and i don't really get to do them all that much so i'm um, doing a new sculpt with a stag uh, and i'll be going it through in this video so when i sculpt things i primarily use monster clay and monster clay is a wax based clay um, i'm not going to go through what it is too much because i have a separate video for it so i'll try and remember to link it down below and I talk about uh, what it is and stuff and what I use it for um, but yeah I use it to sculpt the base of my sculpture parts for my dolls uh, and then I mold it in silicon and then cast it in resin. So as monster clay is a wax based clay you have to keep it warm so it is durable and you can mold it easily uh, otherwise it goes rock hard and it's it's too hard to use but it's good for sculpting and stuff like that if you're uh, you know subtractive sculpting. So I usually start off with a weird looking shape uh, <laughs> for the base of the head. Uh, it's, it's, it's usually a very vague shape of what I'm sculpting. So in this instance, I am sculpting a stag head. So I'm just laying out where I want everything to be. And I'm using these little glass cabochon as a eye placement. So uh, in the future, I intend to uh, have all my resin casts um, compatible with glass eye casting. And it's something that I've developed myself, so I'm not sure if I'm going to do any sort of tutorials on glass eye casting. If I do, it would probably be a paid tutorial, and um, I do plan on opening a um, Patreon in the future. I've just got to sort some things out first before I can do that. So it might be, you know, a high reward or something. I don't know if it's just talk right now, so I'm not really sure if I'm going to do it or not. Anyway, back to the sculpting. So what I'm doing now is I'm sort of mapping out uh, the nose area and the eye area. Uh, it's very, very rough. Um, I chose these smaller eyes, but I wasn't happy with them. So I did end up changing the eyes out for bigger ones, which I'm really happy I did. So now I'm just building up the snout area. Um, that was kind of the hardest thing on this sculpt for me is building the snout area because it looks like a cow a, a lot of the time, um, but if you look at a deer's head, it is very cow-like surprisingly. So um, yeah, it's very like fine line between deer and cow. <laughs> so when I sculpt a lot of things, I use a lot of reference photos and I use from very uh, different angles and all sorts of pictures and everything like that. Um, so definitely when you're sculpting something, you do want a lot of reference photos. So you have the dimensions right and the proportions right. So it is really difficult to sculpt things from your head, but you know, there's some people that can do it and they're just amazing. But that's not me! Okay, so I got those uh, plastic antlers online. Um, they're just like a... I don't know what they are, I just found them online. Um, and I wanted to do a deer sculpt that could use these antlers. So it sort of turned out a bit bigger than I wanted it to, but in the end I'm kind of glad it was this size because it looks really good um, when it's a little bit bigger as well. So you want to check throughout the whole sculpting process that these antlers fit properly and um, that the proportion is right as well So and, and that they're um, symmetrical as well. So I'm sculpting the ears on now and I usually uh, create the rough ear shape um, when it's off the body and then I'll attach it and then uh, refine the way the ear looks um, when it's on the head just so it's all symmetrical again and all the antlers fit um, while the ears are on because sometimes they can butt up against the antlers and then it looks a bit weird. So once I'm happy with that and I let it harden up a little bit so I can uh, manipulate it, I'm just working on the proportions of the eyes and also the snout area. Um, so I always end up sculpting something with uh, the intention for it to be small and then I just keep adding, adding, adding and then it, the, the sculpt just gets huge. Which is fine, I guess it's just my style, I just like bigger dolls. Uh, it's hard for me to do smaller dolls for some reason, I just like the bigger uh, dolls. So I'm doing quite a bit of subtractive carving here and I'm using a clay tool with a little loop around it. I need to get a proper um, rake tool. Uh, I've got some piano wire and stuff that you can make a rake tool out of. Um, but I want to get some saw tooth uh, as well and make a uh, rake tool out of that. But let me know in the comments if you want a video on how to make your own rake tool because I know how to do it. Um, I'm just being very lazy. <laughs> So I basically just carve away and refine uh, the head sculpt for quite a number of hours. Um, it's, I think it took about maybe five to six hours to complete this sculpt. 
Um, and you can see here, I was unhappy with the way the eyes looked after however long. Um, I tried to make it work, but at the end I just wasn't happy, so I had to take them out and do something else, otherwise I just would have hated the sculpt. So definitely, if you're not happy with something, just do it again, and until you are happy, um, it, there's no harm in it, there's no rush or anything, just make sure you're happy with your work. So I went for a larger Capuchon here, um, I'm really happy I did because it was the right proportion for the head and as I said I start off small and the eyes just ended up didn't working for that particular sculpt so I needed to go uh, up a size. So I'm not too sure what size these Capuchons are, um, I, they might be 16 or 18 millimetres, I'm not quite sure. It hasn't got rid on the packet and I'm really not great, great <laughs> sizes. So yeah, at the end of the day, I'm really glad I done the eyes again because then they turned out exactly how I wanted them. So just adding some clay around the eyes to make the eyelid and um, I usually have these uh, little um, circles around the eyes, uh, just the kind of uh, trait of mine, I don't know why, but this particular one, I didn't do it. It may seem it right now, but I ended up turning it into fur. Uh, it looks a little bit more realistic and uh, a little bit less cartoonish and stuff, so I might end up going that way uh, in the future as opposed to having, um, if you watch all my other videos, I usually do like black around the eyes and um, yeah, I might, I might sort of lean away from that. So right now I am adding some fur texture to the head and I get a lot of questions why I actually do this and if I'm going to cover it with fur and I do it for a number of reasons. Um, I find that it makes the piece um, kind of look finished and it doesn't look messy or anything like that or, or there's weird little gaps and stuff in in the clay so um, yeah that's one reason why I do it the second reason is because it gives a good texture for um, when I fur the face it actually has something to um, sink into and adhere to properly um, as opposed to a smooth surface because sometimes resin is quite slippery but not that the glue that I use will attach either way so it's no problem it's just something I prefer to do and uh, the third reason is um, I'm able to sculpt some more shape into the um, piece so um, I can carve out and shape where I want the fur to go and it sort of gives it a new realis realism to it. So it's not really a necessity but it's just something I prefer to do. So for this one I'm um, sculpting some hooves and I'm just going to go for uh, a mould of two hooves so I can do two different um, castings and get uh, four feet um, as opposed to just the one and it takes forever to actually cast four feet. So um, it's and it's not all that much extra silicon, uh, it's not all that much extra work either so it's kind of easy to do. So um, I had a look at some images of um, deer hooves so um, I just ended up sculpting them and they're really quick to sculpt too so they're really simple and a lot of it's going to be covered with fur anyway so it doesn't need to be too uh, ex uh, extravagant. And just like the head you want to check the proportions so what I usually do is I blow up the image uh, in Photoshop until it is the size of the head and then I'll compare what I've sculpted on the feet to the image as well to see if it's the right size so just a handy little tip. And then once these are hard, uh, they're ready for moulding. So I'll try and do a video of the moulding process, uh, so stay tuned for that. Alright guys, that's it for me today. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. If you have any requests, you can leave it in the comments down below. And you can also check me out on Instagram and Facebook at Creatures of Net. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye!